Welcome back guys. Now let's discuss about action potential within a neuron. Okay. Action potential in neurons. So neurons are having a resting membrane potential of what do you, what do you think is the resting membrane potential of a neuron? Resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolts, minus 70 millivolts. Okay. For example, let me show you a neuron. For example, this is the axon of a neuron. Okay, axon of a neuron. Now this area is the axon hillock. Okay. Now let me divide this neuron into three parts. Let me divide this into the three parts. Now neurons are having action potential of minus 70 millivolts, something like this. See, when you stimulate, when you are giving stimulation, okay, when you are giving stimulation, so what happens is the resting membrane potential will move towards the threshold potential. From minus 70, it becomes a little positive. For example, whatever the stimulation that you are giving, the stimulation is powerful enough. If it is sufficient enough, if it can bring the resting membrane potential to threshold potential, that is from minus 70 to minus 55. What happens is once this threshold potential is attained, once you have minus 55 millivolts, then immediately on the surface of this axon, on the surface, these channels are going to open. Previously they are closed. Now these channels will start to open. So what are these channels? These are voltage gated sodium channels. They are voltage gated sodium channels. Why they are called as voltage gated? Because they are sensitive to voltage. Okay. Once the cells are of cell voltage, once it becomes minus 55 millivolts, they start to open. These channels will open and sodium will start to come into the cell. So the same events, let me show you in this diagram, okay, in this graph. See, it is minus 70 millivolts in the beginning. When you are trying to initiate, see, you are trying to give the stimulation. Okay, you are trying to give the stimulation. So, see, these are failed initiations. You are trying to stimulate it. The resting membrane potential is going to, from minus, uh, from minus 70, it is going to maybe minus 60 or minus 65. This is not enough. If you can bring this resting membrane potential towards the threshold potential that is minus 55. Do you know what happens immediately? Sodium channels, voltage gated sodium channels are going to open. So sodium from outside enters into the cell. Okay, because sodium concentration is going to be more outside the cell. So from high concentration, sodium enters into the cell. So what happens? See, as the positive charges are coming into the cell, the voltage in the cell is becoming positive somewhere around plus 40 millivolts. Okay, it's becoming plus 40 millivolts. Means it is moving towards the positivity. So, let me write the same thing here. From minus 55, as there is due to influx of sodium positive ions into the cell, the membrane potential is reaching to plus 40. So, this phase is called as a depolarization. The cell is getting electrically activated. The positive charges are coming into the cell. So, electrical excitation. So, this is called as depolarization. Okay. Now, my point is, see the sodium whatever is coming into this area, okay, the sodium is not going to just stay over there. The sodium will also move towards the sites, okay, it is also going to move towards the sites. So, here in this area, the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolts. So, some amount of sodium is going to trickle to the surrounding area, which is going to bring minus 70 to minus 55, that is reaching the threshold potential. Once the threshold potential is attained, what happens? Even in this area, the sodium channels, voltage gated sodium channels are going to open. So, sodium influx into the cell. That means the sodium is in coming into the cell that will cause depolarization. Now, this sodium will reach to the surrounding area. Here also, from minus 70 millivolts, from minus 70 millivolts, the voltage will reach to minus 55 millivolts. Once 55 is attained, threshold is attained, even in this area, the voltage gated sodium channels are going to open which brings the sodium into the cell leading to the depolarization. So, a wave of depolarization is spreading through the axon. Okay, a wave of depolarization is spreading through the axon. Okay, so this is how the cells, the axon is going to be depolarized and this is how the electrical impulse. Okay, see the axon, if this is the axon, see the axon is getting electrically activated. Okay, it's getting positive, 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 something like that. See, when this segment is undergoing depolarization, this segment which is proximal, the proximal segment which have already undergone depolarization and have already made the 
digital segment activated now it should have to undergo this segment now it should have to undergo repolarization again it have to come back after depolarization for after activation there should be an activation see this is activated this segment is activated and it have further activated the the nearby segment now that segment which have undergone the depolarization this segment a segment now it have to undergo repolarization so now what happens sir now once this positive potential is attained once plus 40 is attained now on the cells different channels are going to open these different channels are opened these channels are potassium channels potassium channels voltage gated potassium channels now they are going to let the potassium to go out of the cell okay they are letting the potassium to go out of the cell so potassium is coming out as the potassium is going to come out see positive charges are coming out of the cell so what happens so positivity is going out so look here in the action potential graph as the potassium is going out so the membrane potential is again going to come down come down come down something like this so this process is called as repolarization this is because of what this is because of potassium ions are going out potassium ions are going out of the cell sometimes what happens is more potassium ions will go out okay if more potassium ions are going out the cell is becoming inactivated that process is called as hyperpolarization but immediately the membrane voltage will be brought back with the help of sodium potassium ATPases whatever are present on the cell by main by the sodium potassium ATPases again the resting membrane potential is going to be brought back so how many phases are there in total how many phases are there see first phase what exactly is phase one so let me write one by one the phases of the action potential the depolarization depolarization so phase one phase one is from resting membrane potential to threshold potential okay from resting membrane potential to the threshold potential that is from minus 70 millivolts to minus 55 millivolts this is the phase one after phase one what do we have phase two so what is phase two sir phase two is depolarization okay phase two is depolarization depolarization is because of what sodium influx sodium influx is causing the depolarization next phase three phase three is repolarization repolarization it is because of potassium efflux next phase four sometimes you can have hyperpolarization okay hyperpolarization it's also because of potassium efflux or even because of chloride influx okay chloride means negative ions are coming into the cell so that can lead to hyperpolarization and last phase is phase 5 phase 5 is resting membrane potential okay look here the phase 5 this is the resting membrane potential resting state it's because of the sodium potassium ATPases right now these are the five phases of the action potential in a neuron now here i want you to know a few more important things like what exactly is absolute refractory periods two types of refractory periods are there okay refractory periods what are the two types of refractory periods absolute refractory period and relative refractory period okay relative refractory period so what exactly are these refractory periods means resting period okay resting kind of say now imagine there is this axon okay there is this neuron and there is an axon right now when you stimulate it okay it's going to undergo depolarization and repolarization okay depolarization followed by repolarization depolarization followed by repolarization okay now let's see here this is the resting phase okay let's start here this is the resting phase now phase one is from resting phase to threshold potential this is the phase one okay from minus 70 to minus 55 okay minus 70 to minus 55 for example here it's given 60 but minus 55 that will be better now what happens see this is the depolarization now the axon or this neuron is undergoing depolarization that segment is undergoing depolarization now once it is getting depolarized okay that segment is getting depolarized 
Now again if you stimulate it, again stimulate that neuron, okay again stimulate it, do you think one more depolarization is going to occur? Already it is getting depolarized. So how hard do you stimulate it? Whatever the stimulus you give, it is not going to generate one more action potential, okay. So during this period, from where to where, from here starting of the depolarization, almost one third of repolarization, almost one third of repolarization. So during this period, okay, when this neuron is undergoing depolarization and one third of repolarization, how hard you stimulate it, whatever the stimulus you give it, another action potential, other depolarization is not going to be produced. Okay, how hard the stimulus is. This is called as absolute refractory period. In absolute refractory period, no action potential is produced. How hard the stimulus is? No action potential, how hard the stimulus is? But then what is relative refractory period? From here, see, from here till here. So this period, this time period, okay, during this time period, if you stimulate, if you are giving a stimulation, still the neuron is undergoing repolarization, repolarization, hyperpolarization. During this period, Yes, it can generate one more action potential if you give a higher stimulus. Okay, if you can give higher stimulus, it can generate one more action potential. Normally, it is not going to produce, but if you give a stimulus which is more than normal, more than normal, it can produce one more, one more depolarization. So, in relative refractory period, action potential is produced with higher stimulus with higher stimulus okay so these are the two important refractory periods which i want you to know absolute refractory period and relative refractory period so with this we have completed the topic of action potential within a neuron hope the video is helpful see you in the next video thank you